All right, everybody, welcome to the channel. So today's video, I'm gonna go through a list of Kundalini symptoms, and I'm gonna keep this video fairly concise. I'll just go, I've got a list here, and I'll just go through this list and give a little bit of information on my experience with these symptoms. Um, but if you want to get deeper into my, this, my Kundalini Awakening story, I've got other videos on my channel going into that. And also, if you want to find out ways to help deal with some of these symptoms, I've also got a video up talking about dealing with physical Kundalini symptoms and I will be, I'll upload some more videos um, shortly to how you can help deal with some of the other symptoms that I outline in this list. With some of these things, there's going to be crossover with other things that are medical illnesses potentially. So just because you've got like maybe one or two of these symptoms doesn't necessarily mean you're having a Kundalini awakening and if you are concerned about some of those symptoms then it is a good idea to seek um, medical advice but it's worth bearing in mind if it is a kundalini awakening the vast majority vast vast majority of people in um, western medicine are going to have no understanding of kundalini whatsoever and are likely going to be of very little help um, so yeah it's worth bearing that in mind um, the other thing to say as well just before i go through this list is a, a kundalini awakening it is not um, it's not a mild or subtle process, at least in my personal experience. This is not something that you're going to be like, uh, uh, once, once you understand and know what a Kundalini awakening is, this is not going to be something of like, oh, am I having a Kundalini awakening? Am I? It's like, this is, this is not subtle. This energy is extremely powerful in the body. Um, and, and causes extremely profound changes in states of consciousness in the physical body and things like that. Because I, I've seen some videos um, online and uh, on, you know, like, you know, people um, can speak from their experience, but I've seen videos saying, like, uh, like, you maybe. Am I going through a Kundalini awakening and don't know it? And, like, signs that you're going through a Kundalini awakening and. and don't know it. it's like that's not me that's not you're gonna know about it <laughs> this is not so so yeah okay so i'll i'll get into the lists so firstly muscle twitches cramps spasms this is extremely common and these um are often like you, you, in my experience you'll feel the energy moving through the body causing these muscle cramps twitches and spasms it's not the same as if you're just having some like shaking twitch it's like you can feel the energy in the body doing that so that's that's a very common one that's been prevalent throughout my experience energy rushes um or immense electricity feelings of immense electricity circ circulating through the body again this is incredibly powerful um it feels like you're plugged into an electric mains system and it's just like it can just be raging through the body at times other times it's more subtle um, it tends to be more powerful when you're in a state of rest, so like going to bed or um, just completely relaxing your body. So that's that's a big one. Itching, vibrating, tingling sensations, prickling sensations, and crawling sensations. Now these are usually like over the skin, and again these can be very, very strong. I think a lot of the time with the itching and things like that, my personal op opinion is. As long as you're not getting psychotic about it, scratch it because that is the body naturally wanting to release toxins through the skin. Um, and I've found actually during my Kundalini a very light scratching when there's when there's those itching processes will bring up quite strong like rash marks instantly almost just from a little scratch. So like it's that energy, it's, it's just um, and toxicity is just wanting to be purged so just go with it. Intense feelings of hot and cold this is not something I've had too much of personally but I have had periods where it'll feel like early on in my Kundalini I had periods where it felt like my body was on fire from the inside just like we're getting really crazily hot. Cold I haven't really experienced but I've read that other people have had that. I, I have had um, I've had it mildly on occasion, um, but yeah, it's not been a big one for me. <clears throat> so involuntary body movements. Now this is this has been a huge one for me. These are known as Kriyas, and I will be uploading a video 
separately on careers, going much more into depth on uh, my career process, my, my process with careers, sorry. Um, so this is like jerking, shaking, tremors, um, moving into spontaneous postures, mudras, um, all sorts of things. And again, the difference between this just being like um, some medical condition um, is going to be, you're going to feel the Kundalini energy inside doing that to your body, like moving your body in those ways. Alterations in eating and sleeping patterns. You can have periods of insomnia, uh, periods of just wanting to sleep for hours and hours and hours. And I would say if you can, just go with that. Like if if, if your body needs to sleep and and you, you can and you've got the um, physical situations to allow that, then just sleep for as long as you can. Sometimes it'll be like in the middle of the day, you'll just like feel just a massive tiredness come over you and just if you can just go and sleep like you've got in this process you've got to trust the body and got to respect the body's needs it's a it's a very taxing process um or it can be a very taxing process on the physical vessel this kind of ties in a little bit but ex extremes in hyperactivity are feeling a lot of fatigue and so kundalini symptoms can often be misdiagnosed uh, as chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia by the medical profession um, and yeah if you're just having those symptoms without all these others and without the energy then it's likely one of those two things but yeah with all the rest then it's, it's another very uh, prominent especially for me the fatigue early on symptom of Kundalini. Headaches Pressures around the skull, um, feelings like the the bones in your skull are being shifted and moved. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, that sort of speaks for itself. But that's uh, that's been again another one that I've had a lot of. Um, racing heartbeats, pains in the chest, um, heart palpitations. This is, obviously, you've got to be really careful with this one because if something like that is going on, you, may, you might need to go to the hospital. But I found for me, it, again, that's during the Kundalini awakening. Everything the Kundalini does, it knows what it's doing. It's perfectly safe. Even if some of these symptoms that I'm talking about can seem absolutely wild and extremely um, terrifying at times, especially early on in the process. Uh, you can have digestive system problems, that's another common one. All And all these symptoms are the Kundalini energy clearing things out and trying to find balance, clearing out blockages, emotional traumas, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, you can have pains anywhere in the body, blockages anywhere in the body, and these blockages will be very obvious to you where the Kundalini energy can't move through them, and it will often like shift around them, move into them, and eventually work through them. I've used the metaphor of like the ocean breaking down rocks. You know, this this current, this water is gradually wearing away, wearing away these um, blocks, these tough, energetic, physical, emotional blockages in the body. You can have emotional outbursts. I mean, this is incredibly common. So rapid mood shifts um, and excessive episodes of grief fear, uh, rage, depression, anger, frustration, and sometimes these can just seemingly come out of nowhere, so there's no, there's nothing in the physical that has made you feel that way, and really it is old programs, old traumas being purged out of the body, and so I would suggest with that, just go with it, like, if you're feeling that anger, be with that anger, let it out, but don't judge it. That's the important thing. Like, it, have separation from it if you can do that. Allow yourself to express it without judgment. So, yeah, intensified sexual desires or conversely diminished sexual desires. Again, to me, like in my experience, this is the Kundalini energy. Want to find balance. So you you may be moved through periods of extreme sexual desire. Um. 
and also like sexual shadow may come up so things like sexual desires that you may judge as inappropriate or dark or negative or bad um and some of this is like clearing for yourself some of it's clearing for the collective um and again a good idea with this is a, is to allow those desires and things like that to play out in your energy field and in your mind without judgment um they're not not necessarily to be played out in the physical um and in fact probably best not to really um but that's a different that's a different subject i'll, I'll maybe do a video diving into kundalini and sexuality at another time so yeah in, just just again just go with go with those feelings um it's it's the energy try to find homeostasis and balance within um yeah within the realm of sexuality so yeah you can have spontaneous vocalizations um this is very commonly linked with the kriyas in my experience so as i've been having the spontaneous movements and certain energies have been released from the body that will be expressed as vocalizations um that can just include like spontaneous laughing spontaneous crying and um speaking in tongues things like that um these these are as uncontrollable basically as a sneeze or something like that they're not yeah they just come up and so just be with it just let it let it out you can have periods of mental confusion and difficulty concentrating this like this was especially prevalent again for me early in the early years because so much has been come up so much has been brought up sorry to be cleared um you can be under a great deal of stress if you're going through intense physical suffering like i was and you can get all sorts of yeah just periods of cloudedness but then again you can also get periods of absolute clarity focus and seemingly like the ability to just absorb knowledge and information extremely easily quickly and then be able to express that um so yeah like there's, there's always like the dualistic element to these um clearings and processes because the 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 shadow elements or something let's say like mental confusion is a way of clearing things to be able to get to that state of uh, a deeper mental clarity if you get what i'm saying so yeah other things hearing inner sounds this is very common um so you might hear like waterfall sounds or birds singing and like a buzzing sound roaring whooshing like whooshing sounds um yeah like a low vibrating um almost om like sound and yeah so sounds in a in a in a auditory uh, sounds that's common yeah so most of those are like the bad <laughs> experiences the um yeah the negative experiences i suppose so i'm going to list a few of the what you might call more positive experiences but also some of these especially the sort of psychic phenomena can also be very uh, daunting or unnerving and you know um if you're going through them as well so yeah so altered states of consciousness extreme heightened awareness um being able to feel people's energy fields extremely powerfully being extremely sensitive to people's moods so if someone if you're with someone and they're in like a bad mood that can be almost unbearable to be in their presence um i remember an experience when i was many years ago and i was living in a shared house during the early parts of my kundalini awakening and one of my housemates was in the kitchen like in a really bad mood like slamming plates around and things like that and it was so it was physically incredibly painful me for me to feel that energy um so you can be so sensitive to these things like loud music can be unbearable um watching violence on tv or something like that it's like you you feel it so much 
Um, you can feel like the pain of the planet, the, the pain of, um, you know, Gaia, like the, the, all these, um, all these collective pains can, can be brought to come through you as well in, in that it's like you're expanding out to feel, um, deeper layers of um, reality and consciousness so yeah that can be quite overwhelming um, but you also feel like the love um, of the planet of Gaia of um, source of God you know all these all these things so it's it's beautiful as well so spontaneous trance states um, like m moving into um, mystical states visionary experiences visitations from like spiritual teachers like uh, people like uh, i mean i've had visitations so i'm not going to go in, in names but um like a, a certain spiritual masters um the ability to see your spirit guides so a lot of th third eye awakenings seeing into other levels of reality so for me are very common and this has been from right from the onset of my kundalini and even pr prior to it this this was occurring when it's dark um in a room it's just, just it's not dark for me it hasn't been for many years uh, for like since like i said since the start of this so there's a static purple fog everywhere and you can see the energy um and being able to see so in a pitch black room, if I raise my hand up, I can see like the light body of my hand, basically. And yes, yeah, so it's seeing entities. I've, um, f for me, it's often with that. that so this is eyes open and closed as well. Um, and you might just see their sort of shadowy form, not, not exactly how they are um, in reality, but you can see the energy moving through these, this static purple purple fog is how I perceive it like this so it's like a TV it's like a you know like an old TV when it's detuned it's kind of like that but purple and constantly shifting and sparkling so that kind of thing the one thing to say with these heightened states and these mystical states you've you've got to you've got to try and keep grounded with this because um, for some people um, and I guess to certain degrees within everyone, they can lead to, you know, you can get into an idea of like um, self grandiosity, sort of um, messiah complex type things. Um, so you've got to be careful with that. Like this experience is a gift from source. It's like a wonderful healing, powerful experience, and it is a special experience in a certain way. But that doesn't mean make mean you make you special or better or you know, from anyone else. It's just where a soul's at in its soul journey. Its soul's journey. Um, and so, yeah, you keep yourself. You've got to keep yourself grounded on this on this path. Um, yeah. So I'll I'll leave that at that. Um, so yeah, bliss states, absolute pure ecstasy, and tremendous joy love peace like heart bursting open massive like huge amounts of compassion for life the planet um everyone you know in your life um yeah just overwhelming feelings of love and compassion and understanding and connection to everything um yeah you're gonna get very likely to get like past life memories, lucid dreaming. That has that has been huge for me. I had a period of about two years during my Kundalini when I was just lucid dreaming all the time, night after night, hundreds, hundreds, thousands of lucid dreams, and so much healing goes on in that lucid dream state. Um, and I'm I'll do a video separately on lucid dreaming because that's a big one. You might have spontaneous astral travel. This has been. Um, not too prevalent for me. I've had like leave. I've had experiences of like leaving the body, but then it's they've been very fleeting for me. So on my journey so far, I mentioned contacts with spirit guides, but so you might have those coming up in dreams, coming to you in visions. Um, 
you maybe hear messages coming through, you've, um, like audio, uh, like voices and things like that. And again, these can be scary for some people. And you've also got to be very, you've got to learn to discern in, in all this because you've got to be able to discern the energy of where these are coming from because it's not just necessarily going to be positive entities that engage with you on this path. Um, there can be dark entities as well and yeah that's a whole other subject and I will do a video on that but yeah you've got to learn to discern I don't want to like scare people about that because at the end of the day you are light you are you've got the power to shield yourself and protect yourself and there's loads of techniques you, you can get into to do that um, and you've got support from your your guides high dimensional entities your own higher self God source you know whatever you want to call the ultimate <laughs> you know so yeah you can also have like an intensified understanding of insights into your own um, inner essence uh, one thing that's that for me um, is very prevalent is like the ability to feel truth and this is a very visceral response from the Kundalini energy to certain spiritual truths. Like if I hear a certain spiritual truth, the energy will light up inside my body, like tingling, vibrating light up. It's like, this is true, this is true. And that's very useful. <laughs> and it's also does that for other things that aren't necessarily just big um, philosophical spiritual truths. I've also found that process for slightly more mundane things but it's more common for those big powerful spiritual truths you'd be able to feel in feel the sort of vibe the energy of rooms places people i kind of touched on that a little bit earlier but yeah so again at first this can be really overwhelming because you're feeling things that maybe you don't want to fear uh, feel and you, you can be like hearing in a certain way thoughts and emotions of and, and energies of people that you you're not used to this and it can be very overwhelming. So there, there is a process and a time to kind of get used to this and um, find balance in it and not, you know, yeah, that's that's, a, that's something that needs to be kind of worked on, I guess, for, for each individual to try and find that balance. Yeah, last, last couple. So an increase in creative ability. So you might get new interests, new creative passions, um, or your creative passions that you previously uh, were involved in, you just you just get a much more heightened sense of creativity. And if, uh, for me, like for music, for example, is something I was I've been involved in music, and it's been my creative passion for a, a long time. And since my Kundalini awakening, for a period I couldn't do anything um, musical because of the physical suffering I was going through and all and all that kind of thing. But yeah, once I got back to it, the creativity was just flowing through and I found that it was much easier to just be more of a channel for creative output and get the ego out of the way, basically. So, yeah. Um, and, yeah, enlightenment experiences. Direct perception and direct knowing of... Um, truth and... Um, transcendent awareness um, this can come in extremely profound burst throughs into those spaces and states or it, or it can come as a slow sort of ebbing into your consciousness bit by bit by bit and just moving deeper and deeper into that connection with oneness and connection with um, source, God, whatever you want to call it that's the main majority of kundalini symptoms there might be others that you go through that i haven't covered here there's probably a few little areas that i haven't talked about um or missed out but that's generally uh the, the the majority of them and like i said at the start of this video if you are if you're all concerned for your physical health do go to um a medical doctor um but yeah they're not going to understand a kundalini awakening that's just the way things are at the moment but hopefully that will change in the future i think more and more people are going to be having kundalini awakenings and it's going to come more and more into the mainstream as we 
um, move through this kind of global awakening process that's underway. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, just put them in the comments below. And there'll be more videos coming soon. And, yeah. Uh, peace.